there's this thread on on reddit um this user kind of wrote on there um and it's titled i'm gonna get up on here it's titled uh went to berkheim was super disappointed and won't go back right so it's a thread i saw on reddit and it reads as follows personally i think berkheim is a really lame club the whole vibe of the club is totally fake. It just seems like everyone there is dressed and acting the way they do to conform to the arbitrary rules set by the door guy, not because that's how they actually are. I got rejected last week with a group of two friends, acting and dressing like my normal self. So I did some internet research, then came back alone with a, with all black clothes, a dog collar around my neck, and a stupid black cape I brought from a fancy dress shop. I felt like an absolute idiot, but it worked and I got in. The club itself was pretty disappointing. I've clubbed a lot of places around the world and it was definitely nothing special and not even better than other nightclubs in Berlin. I felt like the entire reputation of the place is just created by difficulty of getting in. I stayed for a few hours, then left and went to another club without a stupid door policy where I could invite my friends and not have to wonder if they could even be allowed in. Why would you want to go somewhere with a guy at the door going nine or ya yeah, and deciding people's um, fates uh, in a scene reminiscent of the in entry to a concentration camp? The techno scene is supposed to be about accepting people, not rejecting people. This It really pisses me off to hear that people's nights were ruined because of what a doorman at a nightclub thought of their outfit. Or hear them elated because they made it pass like something that trivial should affect their ego i get the feeling of talking to people in berlin that the reason they say that they had a great time there is because their ego got boost and they felt exclusive when they got let in um forward slash rant sorry just needed to get out of my head um too long didn't read but burger is totally overrated now of course this person has their you know you have a right to say what you want to say about the Berghain and I kind of understand the sentiment even though it kind of started off as an attack straight away right personally I think the Berghain um, is really lame club right you you can't you don't you don't really gonna get a succinct point or nuanced point starting off that way but you know again personal experience I kind of do understand where that person's coming from I get it right you go to a play especially a nightclub I think for the most part clubbing culture especially well yeah clubbing culture by and large anyway um especially in the last few years has basically been you know um if you have the money you can come in right that's what most nightclubs are like right um and i guess Berghain or the berlin scene in general is a bit of a sh it's a bit of a um, it's a bit of a mind fuck because it's probably the one place in the world where most places don't just let you in if you have the money especially the places that you want to go to right um, some places you don't even know about because they're not on the internet they're kind of all kept hush hush um, by locals or people in the know the places that you do want to go to on the internet are really tight and aware of who they want to let in because they don't want to damage or ruin the place that everyone's talking about on the internet so there's this weird kind of balance that they found where the only way to kind of really get it right is to make sure that the door picking from the front is what sets a tone on the inside. It's kind of get that to get that thing started off in the front. The front is the main thing. As long as you let the people that you let in are right, the vibe inside is going to be right because you're you're aware that you have the best DJs playing in there. You're aware you got the best sound system. Like that's by and large going to happen. You're aware you got the best spaces, right? Some of the most interesting club spaces in general, right? To party can be found in in Berlin as a city. So you know you got that right. But the other thing is a variable that you really can't control. People you let in. So the only way to do it is by selecting. And sometimes it can be annoying. You know, it can kind of remind you of kind of the 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 um, one of the reasons why kind of studio 54 kind of went downhill after watching the documentary that came out recently i recommend you check it out was by and large due to the fact that the owner of the studio 55 tied a lot of his ego around who he selected to come in right he went to be a celebrity himself and um, he finally had a space where he kind of can be the main man the velvet robe idea came from that and the idea of like denying people and letting other people come in uh, built up resentment in the local scene, right? It started off as this kind of escape for people in the LGBTQ or gay community to kind of come and release themselves from a society that wasn't really accepting of who they are, what their sexuality was. And they can kind of finally be in a safe space where they can kind of celebrate each other and music in this amazing environment. Then it kind of transcended and kind of went into pop culture and then celebrities wanted to come and get involved because again it was a place where people could be free and be themselves without the kind of um feeling they were kind of being watched by an all-seeing public um and then of course naturally the kind of you know general consumer on the street suffered because of that because you know they were promoting celebrities and that was all kind of going at the forefront and it kind of built resentment right because if you're queuing up especially seeing pictures of it's had it has footage in the in the 254 documentary that came out a while back uh, a few more well, maybe a few months ago you should check it out but there's footage of of 254 during its heyday with you know uh a fucking 
crowd of people at the front door, not even the queue, because you know they, they didn't have really have good queue manager at that time, or in general just got a bit too crazy. And literally celebrities jumping out of cars and shouting across the crowd at the bar and to kind of let them in, right? And then and then they're being escorted and kind of weed through the crowd that have been waiting outside the door for like three or seven, three or four hours, right? And then, of course, that can build resentment and you can kind of think, you know what, fuck this place. I and mean, respectively, that's what happened, right? And that kind of coincided with the kind of um, uh, Disco Sucks movement and then, by, and you know, and so but surely mismanagement of, f- of funds and, you know, the whole controversy that happened with 54 with those guys embezzling the money and it closed. But kind of the, the domino effect was the fact that they kind of, you know, um, took the selecting process um, to places where it should never go, where it kind of, you know, um, prioritized celebrities over the general public and it kind of, you know, um, kind of built resentment of people on the outside. But Burkhan has done a really good way, has done a really best way by kind of the core of the kind of reason why it's around is because, you know, it's a safe haven for the gay community that um, are kind of the reason why electronic music is where it is, especially in that kind of city, right? So they try and keep that core, right? That fetish gay scene that kind of is the reason why it's so weird and people always talk about a dark room stumbling in there. Do you know what I mean? The, 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 the things that kind of make you in awe of the space and make you appreciate this thing exist is what they've kind of been trying to keep intact, right? They're trying to be holding desperately. There's been fucking Conan went to fucking Burkine and tried to do that whole sketch show there. There's been umpteen videos made about it of how to get in. It's all over pop culture, right? It's all over mainstream media. But somehow they've still remained this, they've still kind of kept this kind of underground ethos about the Burkine, right? And the reason, only way to do that is flexing at the front door. Now, trying to get in is obviously, of course, difficult. I'm not going to say it isn't. Um, but once you do get in, you realize why it's so difficult to get in because the space itself is probably uh, one of the, if not one of the best club designs you've probably ever seen, right? An amazing factory that they've kind of converted into this um, hallowed church sort of kind of building on the inside with an amazing uh, sound system, especially Bergheim in the main room, Panorama Bar probably may not, not so much because of how the layout is. But for the most part, from the toilets, how they're designed with the with the fucking metal, sh- the heavy metal sheet doors and the beam, the like little LED light beam on the side, like everything about it is just insane. So by the time you get in there, you realize what all the hype is about because um, audios, um, your audio sensitivity and all that sort of malarkey, you just it just tingles walking in there, right? Hearing the fucking do, 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 do as you're handing in your coat downstairs, walking around, seeing the massive statue, walking up the stairs, just it's just insane. Everything, all your senses get blown away. And again, like I said, when, when the person that gets turned away, it's annoying. But I think I've been to the Bergheim a lot of times now. And I think by and large, the people that are getting in know they're going to get in. The people that don't get in are not that surprised for the most part. And it's not that difficult to to kind of get in there, especially on your own, especially maybe with smaller groups, people kind of get it. And I think sometimes I don't maybe agree with the whole idea this guy says about, you know, having to change yourself to get into a place. But I think, you know, going to a nice restaurant, going to see somebody at a the theater or whatever or hanging out with a friend or even when you go to your your parents house to go have thanksgiving dinner christmas dinner whatever it may be you get a little bit dressed up right you put on your best outfit i don't know you you, you want to put your best foot forward and there is a kind of idea behind it especially in clubbing culture where there is clubbing gear right you kind of see that a lot when you go to those kind of places like Berkheim or you go to places in berlin where you forget that ravers still exist people that specifically go out to rave and have and showcase a new outfit that they put together and there is something special about that because that's where kind of clubbing culture came from right um and i don't think there's anything wrong with that i don't think there's anything wrong with kind of going out and getting a new outfit to go to a certain place that you kind of want to feel accepted in and kind of feel part of i don't think there's there's nothing worse than going to a place where somebody clearly shouldn't be there right in terms of like you know just in general it kind of throws off the whole entire vibe and again i think that pickiness about it because uh, I, I can't imagine the amount of people they must turn away there, the amount of people that must come through the door on the week on the weekend basis. I think it's w- warranted um, because once again, once you get in, you realize it straight away. And again, I think of all the big clubs in the world, right? You you get you basically get to pay eighteen euros to stay in a club if you want to for three days, right? Because Bergen's open from like Friday all the way to Sunday, right? You can stay in that club all day or early Monday. You can stay in that club all weekend for eighteen euros, and on any given weekend, the lineup is just absolutely insane, right? Any DJ you name that you kind of want to see is going to be playing in that space, right? Let's take a look quickly on the website so I can attest this. I'm pretty sure. Like, it's just like an insane kind of lineup of places. So this is for 18 euros, right? So we've got here, uh, this is all January. So let's see, um, yeah, in this weekend coming up. So on Thursday, right? Let me get this up on the screen. 
Um, so last, so this this Friday just gone, they had a visitor called Meaning. They had Daniel ba Baldelli and Fran Scala, who I really like. Um, then on Saturday they had Laura Carbone, Lucy Kruger. Right on Saturday they had um, Jim Mustafa, uh, Cassie. Tiaja T. Su Sunday they had Jerry Williams and Rotten Fisher. Um, this weekend they're gonna have Blackberry, Sophia Portrait, Anastasia Christensen, Zito back to back with Cancella, which is gonna be fucking cool, and back to back with N NDRX. The day meant like just insane, insane like a venue to go to. And if you go scroll backwards, right to um, let's say fucking December, right? Let's go back to there. Because sometimes, you know, it's good to kind of see what happened in the past. Can I go there? Let's see if it kind of lets me to do that. Da, da, da. The New Year's Eve lineup was even fucking better than that, right? So you got December. So imagine, this is again, this is what I'm saying sometimes. The, all that nonsense is kind of worth it sometimes because of the lineups they have. 18 euros, right? For the whole pick and stuff. Let's look at the lineup for this. Uh, so let's say, imagine you popped into, let's say you went, you went to Berlin for Friday, right? For New Year's Eve. On Friday, you'd have Peaches. Uh, you have Julian Expo, Mesh, you have Zlur. On Sunday, you'd have Niwa, you have Ben Clark, Dax J, uh, The Advent, you have Avalon Emerson, Edward, uh, Fort Remu, Hannah Holland. Like, insane lineup. Not to mention everyone else you might get in January. This is again New Year's Eve. Let's see here 19, let's go 01. And then yeah, and then I just I don't know I I just Marcel Deepman, I just think in general like I think all the kind of hype and the rigmarole behind it is kind of worth it. I know it's annoying for people that don't get in, and I've no because I've been with mates I haven't got in before. I've I've talked to other friends I've been to Berlin I haven't got in and I've had and did that whole big uh, Facebook post complaining about it. And I've kind of defended the Bergheim. I get it, it's annoying, but I think Berlin's again one of those rare, rare places where if you don't get in on the Bergheim, again I wouldn't really frame my whole holiday around going there. I think like having it as a one of the places you want to go visit during the weekend or whenever week you go there is cool um that's really um up to you in that regard but i wouldn't rather frame my whole holiday behind it in terms of like you know because i wouldn't want to frame holiday, uh, my whole holiday around anything in case it flopped i want to have other things to do but i think berlin's one of those weird places like maybe it's similar to london where even if you don't get in uh, to Berkheim, there's plenty of other clubs you can go to a stone throwaway like ct Foss and all these other places that will gladly probably let you in and um, if Berkheim doesn't that equally as good there's no kind of you know there's no delineation between like the you know there might be you know the top tier one but for the most part the level just below that all the clubs are kind of in the same sort of bracket so it's a kind of one place where you can go to where your night isn't ruined by not getting into one place but i think also the fact that they select at doors is one of the main reasons why the clubbing culture has existed for so long and why it's one of the main tourist attractions people go and visit when they go to places like berlin which is one reason why one of the place reasons why our club culture in London has kind of suffered, mainly because of the licensing laws, of course, clubs have to close early, but there isn't that kind of care and attention taken to who kind of is allowed into your space, right? Everyone's allowed in, you can use your phone, everyone's recording everything, like people's flashes are going off left, right and centre, and it kind of takes away from be people being inside in the moment for the most part. And those things are kind of something that I kind of hope that we could kind of do, but we kind of don't. Maybe Fold is the only place that does that. Maybe Fabric in some respects in a way as well. But again, I expect I, and tis, I respect the guy's complaints. I understand where he's coming from, but I think by and large, um, the idea of the Bergheim, the idea of door selection, the idea of taping people's phones, cameras up and making sure people kind of concentrate, having a good time and are in the moment and kind of accept um, um, or respect people's privacy in that environment. Um, you know, I've been in the bird kind of seen plenty of celebrities that I wouldn't mention on here, um, getting up to all sorts of whatever that they get up to and having a time of their life. And there's, there's something, your heart smiles when you see somebody that you know on TV or in media just going crazy, tops off, dancing, having a good time. Because you know, by and large, in their everyday life, they can't necessarily do that. They haven't got a space that they can go to where it's their own, right? They're a public figure, right? They're, they're quote-unquote public property. Everyone kind of feels that they have a right to um, 
take up their time or talk shit to them. And it doesn't happen in the world. And for the most part, if I've seen someone famous, people are actually coming up to them as fans and telling them how much they like them without a picture, right? Which probably says a lot more than about their relationship than a picture would because a picture is kind of like a cheat way to kind of get a bit of clout on social media. But for the most part, they're like really saying, hey, I really like you. I think you're a really good person. I mean, like there's a lot of love coming from there. Um, and yeah, I, I, I just think that... All that trouble, all that pickiness is worth it in the end because it's benefiting so many people, right? I know some people don't get let in, but for the most part, by and large, the people that do get let in are being allowed the platform and an arena to kind of really just be themselves um, for one night, two nights or three nights only. And I think that's um, that's something that's really commendable. Um, I think especially nowadays where people are so prone to like taking something that's working and just fucking with it right just because they want to fuck with it or they want to make their own stamp I think it's just something really commendable by that club being exactly how it was when it first launched now generally the ethos behind it right it's still the same thing it hasn't really lost its magic it's still the same place you go into You're like wow man this place is fucking awesome and um yeah I'm just thankful that I've been given the opportunity to kind of you know to kind of be around when it's still around right to kind of go have the means to go there and to be lucky enough to get in um the times i haven't got in i've been bummed but it hasn't ruined my holiday i've got just gone somewhere else but i do understand and respect their decisions and how they go about things and i hope in general with more education and more kind of experience going around because again we've all we've all lived in places where or we've all been to places where it was once good and it was and it went to shit rarely rarely if ever the place that goes to shit turns it back around it doesn't happen no matter how many banners they put up of like under new management or whatever it may be no way that was once good and uh, that turns to shit turns it back around it just never happens so it's really it's something really precious when it's good you have it's your responsibility to do everything in your power just to keep it that way right and not fuck up fuck, not fuck around with it and the way to do it is by keeping these kind of rules and regulations they have around it. And I think by and large, the rules and regulations only exist at the front of the door. Once you go in, I think apart from the don't take drugs on the dance floor, but for the most part, it's lawless in there. You can do whatever you want. All the rules and regulations only exist on the outside to make sure the right people are getting in. And once you get inside, do what the fuck you want. That's amazing. I just think there's nothing, there's nothing better than that, I think, in my opinion. Um, yeah, that's basically my opinion on that.